Hello everybody and welcome back to Something Else Amigo. What do we have on the show today? Today I got a package in from Mr. Doug. Mr. Doug, here's your girl. Inside the box. Doug sent me a Raspberry Pi 400. It says gift. Doug, you didn't have to do this brother, but thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Inside of this box we have a note written on the tape. It says clean no O2 bottom swap needs recap video port fixed full test. I'll see what I can do. Let me get 1200. Revision uh, 1B same as mine. All original caps RF modulator coil the four cans that make up the video deck here and Take the chroma and the luma and output it and encode it. Let's see what the hell's going on with this thing. I'm just taking a quick gander because sometimes you can have a cracked... Whoa. This is, we're just going to do the initial fire-up test. I have my power supply out already. It is off. We're going to see what this does. DF0 Terminator. Do I get a video signal? Do I get anything? We get nothing. Nothing at all. We're going to go with the old analog mode here. Alright, we're on composite video because my we have no video at all. This is on, right? Yeah, it's on. Okay, let's uh, let's take the Terminator off and we have a nothing Amiga. Doing nothing, nothing, nothing. Black screen, nothing at all. So, I'm not even seeing the normal array of I'm thinking about turning on. Oh, there we go, I got sort of something. Can you even see that? I have the Commodore 3.0 ROM screen that looks horrid. Nine o'clock at night on Omnibot's clock here, yeah. You know, that answers my question. I was told numerous times by various commenters on my videos that the UK units don't have the shielding. Well, this is a PAL Amiga. And, uh, yeah, 50 hertz, and it's in the metal shielding. It's in the shielding. And there's plastic underneath, so that answers my question right there. I don't know what y'all are talking about, that you don't have any shielding on your units. Okay, with the board removed... We're going to sit that down here, and there you go. Plastic, plastic, and uh, yeah, it has some rust on this side. Moisture, I don't know. Normal fingerprints of doom, which I'll clean off. Uh, yeah, some old fingerprints. You can see how the acid eats and etches the metal. That's why I always wear gloves at the end, and you'll see me Windexing them and cleaning them down. Let's check out the bottom of the board. Nice and pretty that I can see. Uh... I don't have the helmet of Goobra. What is this thing? Alright, the RF modulator is coming out of this bad boy because we don't use them anymore. Alright, tonight's special guest star is Lorena Bobbitt, the new Lorena Bobbitt. Woo! And Mona. Three. Got a new spring in her. She's all powerful suction again. Let's do this and do that. Okay, so to reiterate on the camera with everybody's fancy questions of what the heck, why are you touching this board? Uh, my, my dude, my thing is strapped and my foot is also strapped. I uh, anti-static myself to my table, my table's grounded in my house and yada yada yada. I'm going to first remove the RF modulator. One RF modulator. Clean underneath. Whoop, oh, no, a little bit of acid, leaky cap. For the through hole removals, I trimmed down the legs. Caps come right out nice and easy. No fuss, no muss. Showies. There we go. Four through holes, and I'll clean those up as we go along. Lorena time. So, you know the drill. Snip it. 
open her legs up real wide. Finger on the cat. Cut the cat. Ooh, that was a leaky one. Juicy, like a piece of juicy gum there. Relief cut. Relief cut. Relief cut. Carefully take off your aluminum ring. Wow, that one's leaking in my hand. So juicy. Peel off the rubber. Carefully. No rush. Go back. Take off the teats. One. Two. Plastic should come right off. And as you can see, no traces lost. No legs ripped. And then we'll simply swipe our soldering iron over that and remove those legs. Yeah, debraid the pins, pads. Kind of acidy. A little bit of acidy on them. No big deal. That's what the IPA and Q tips are for. Q tips. Q tips. Cotton swabs. Whatever you call them. I continue to push all my trash to the edge of the mat so I keep a clean working surface. Knock other stuff on the floor. Step on it later. All right, what do we got for acid on the original audio circuit? Is a little bit of greening. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now I'm going to debraid the holes. I'm going to need a new one. Avon desoldering wick. $10.49. Five rolls. You get a new spool and you get four spares. So that's cool. So it's basically five rolls, 2.5 mil with good stuff for, uh, you know, 10 bucks. Stick a screwdriver in, separate your dude, peel this off. Pull out your old wick, take the black spring, toss that, new one goes in its place, put through the little thingy, put the cover on, clip. Reloaded. Cool, huh? The more acid you have on these uh, pads, the careful, more careful you should be. Look at all that crap up. Woo! Hot. Now another roll with the IPA. Now this is just the initial thing. This takes me two hours normally, so I'm just gonna take a quick gander at my work. Forgot a through hole. Forgot a through hole up here. So knock those out real quick with a little bit of remaining wick I got. Normally through holes I have to have a fine tip. Pseudo finished work. Three SMD pads. One, two, three. One through hole. Got to do these two still because they didn't come clean. That one and that one. Pseudo clean. But the pads, perfect. I'm going to continue with the four caps underneath of them next to the cans. Cut. Usually I just cut them all because you got to maneuver some angles. To get to all the caps. At least with me because I'm left handed. Then I'll do my relief cuts, peel off the aluminum. Sometimes on the relief cut I can get the rubber and the uh, aluminum in one shot. Otherwise, it's a couple. Yeah, it's going to be a couple times on this. Just take your time, it's not a rush. Cut the teats. Plastic comes right off. Teats. Plastic. Teats. Plastic. <sighs> Again, no traces lost. A little bit of electrolytic leaking out of one. So I'm going to hit it with some IPA first. Neutralize that. Just to get it out of there. Put some blocks on. Bust out the... Okay, with that I'm going to debraid because I already have flux on the parts. That's those. Again, alcohol, wipe up your mess, and I'll show you as I go along. So that's the audio circuit and the video circuit. You can see no pads, no traces lost. Lorena is working. Take your time. It's the steps. It's the cut, relief cut the aluminum, remove the aluminum and the rubber, snip the two nipples, and the plastic comes right off. Debraid your little pegs and Peel, you know, touch the pegs, get them off of there, and debraid. That's it. 18 caps. You can be done in like a little while. The trickiest one you're going to run into is going to be the one right here, 1622, that is behind the uh, the keyboard connector. 
And the trick with that is to not use a 5 mil, but a 3 mil cap. Relief cut, peel off the aluminum. Now I'm going to remove all my things and I'm going to do the keyboard connector one live with y'all because uh, people keep telling me that, oh, you're not doing that when you're doing some magic or I don't know. So we're going to do it together. I'm going to show you the whole shabizzle. So with all the caps removed from the board, i got to take the legs off. So one second and then we'll do the video one together. Now for the video one, okay. I'm going to have to switch tips, because I need a fine tip, and I'll show you why, because you don't want to, you can either solder suck the keyboard connector off, or you can just do it my way, wow, that was crusty, leaky cap there on the audio circuit, wow, legs are really jacked up, so I'm going to debraid the ones I got out in a second, another leaky one near the de uh, power decoupling cap, that's all of them. Minus the keyboard one. Let me clean this up. And not a trace was lost. Let's go over the whole board. We'll start at the right. Now I didn't get all of the through holes done yet, but I'll get my screwdriver as a guide. Uh, one. Two. I'm going to forget some. How are we at? Three. Four. There's a ten around here somewhere. Uh, five. Six. See that? Where is it? You see that? Okay. It's really tiny. Right there. Seven, eight, the through holes nine. Uh ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. See? Not a pad lost, not a thing lifted, not a nothing, no issues, no problems. Had etch, had crust, had issues, but took care of it live right here but we got one left the better way to do this is to pull up on this thing right and if you take a small regular screwdriver to the edge you can pop this uh, this connector off like so see and that gives you another two or three millimeters worth of uh, space in here for your iron now I'm going to turn this off because I have to switch tips Ow, 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 Pull that off. That is blue hot. Look at that. We'll put that right in there. Grab our nice, cool, fine point tip. Put the heat stick back on. Ow, 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 And turn this back on. As this heats up, I'm going to Lorena this cap off. I don't know if you're going to see it, but you're going to see me in the area. Cap off, do a relief cut. Wow, she is juicy. Juicy, juicy. Juicy. Alright, cut the relief cuts or the nipples off. And the plastic piece comes out. There's your there's your keyboard cap. Now remember, I took the plastic piece off so it gave me more room. With my super fine solder tip. I can debraid and get that back on, no problem. So we're first going to flux it and pull off the pegs. Now with this super fine solder tip, you have a lot more control over the area. Debraid. Cool. I didn't burn the printer, serial, whatever. I didn't burn the keyboard connector. So here's your D whatever the thing. You can see it right there. See how it gives me more room to work with? Now, that cap is going back on first. Now, these caps are smaller than the original. That's a good thing. Now, I have no idea how I'm going to show you how to do this, but put your cap on there, position it with your poker, and push it towards the back of the uh, get as much of the negative closest to the back of the port as you can, and I'll show you why. Quick, uh, chip quick, SMD, uh, 2SW, silver solder. With my fine tip, 
cleaned. We're going in on an angle, solder on the one side. We're just going to fill our cap up. Boom. Now, this, the back side is on, okay? And the reason I push it down so far, see how it's down? There's the ball. Gives me all this extra room for that top point of solder. Now I'm going to do that one. And unfortunately, because this camera sucks and my filming is just epic, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. If I had some kind of magic overhead camera where I wasn't in the way, it's possible you could. But I feed the solder in from one side, touch the pad, and let it eat. There we go. And that is how you do your keyboard cap without screwing it up. See? No burns, no burns. And then you just simply take this plastic piece and you can put it back on. Now remember, it only goes on one way, so make sure you put it in the correct way. Which probably is this way. Yeah. And there you go. Binky, 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 bink. Up and down she goes. Lock back in. And there you go. So that's the hardest cap on the board to do because of the... Yeah. If you just take your time, use a super fine tip and the newer, uh, these are Nichicons. Japanese, they were like $800 for a thousand of them. Yeah. Are you stupid or something? I'm stupid. It's 9.41 p.m. So when I have a cap that's going to be close to a port, I will scoot it to whatever side I need the maximum room on. In this case, I didn't want to touch the uh, video port or the audio, so I scooted the cap closest to the negative and flipped it around there. Cool. Or the positive, I meant. I'm going to knock out all the 22s first. That, if you hear a funky noise, my dog has a squeaky pig. I guess that's what you call it. Those little squishy, squishy toy pigs. I need my marker because I'm losing sight. I'll do the through holes last. Okay, so I'm on to the 47s now. The super fine tip makes all the difference in the world. And the PCMCIA is the other 47. That is over here. Beep. All right, so next to the 100s. Next 10. Whew, hold my breath. One more 10. Now 460 never gets a cap. So if you see an Amiga with 460 caps, somebody just put one on there. All right, there's all my 10s. Put my 10s back in the bag. I have all these little bags of parts. 470, let's just do that. Jeez a whiz. It's so bright in here, it's dark. 106.3, I put tens on. Bing. Almost done. Four through holes left. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that is why I do red dots. Clean up my work surface. You should wipe that down. I just did. This is the longest power cord. Like, where am I supposed to put this thing in the in the in the garage? You just watched that whole recap, whether it was accelerated with me yapping or cut bits to each cap. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what we see. Oh, shoot, my camera's dying. All right, power to the camera. Focus, you turd. Okay, here we go. Let's just see what happens. Get a video signal out of RGB now. Let's see. Now remember, my monitor doesn't do 50 hertz very well. Cool. Way better. Way better picture. Turn this off. Let's hook up the GoTech. Up. Yay. Oh, nice. Uh, we're just going to do audio. Holy crap, that's way better. It's much louder with fresh caps. Man, that's cranky. Okay. Way better. Way better. Video. Oh, yes. Look at that. So much nicer. I'm going to check the composite video now without that power sucking RF modulator in there. There we go. Okay. Much better. So nice purple, nice deep purple, good graphics coming in. My monitor has trouble. It's hanging on by a thread with 50 hertz. Okay. Awesome. So as you can see, 
Another Amiga has been saved. Leaky caps. Fix the old RGB and the composite. Remove the modulator. I'll send it back with them. It's a PAL one anyway. It's not going to work in America. And even though my Dell has a little bit of phase lock adjustments on 50 hertz, it's still... It'll get there. Comes around. We have a nice display and it looks great. And I'm going to go back to RGB. Now this would look even better on a 1084S. So, not bad at all. Now I always have the jail bars on my 50 hertz monitors here. I don't know why. Only PAL machines and this Dell 2410F. Because it is a modern monitor, I am downsizing it through the uh, this thing. The Amiga Kit DB23. Now if you want to see the original Commodore one, this is the one that came with my Amiga 4000. This is the official Commodore 1. See? It's even the same thing. Jail bars. More jail bars. So that's just my monitor. If I hook it up to a 1084, it's going to be crystal freaking clear. I have a 1084 right over there. You want to see it? Watch. Now, I have a 60 hertz monitor, so it's going to go like this. Scroll, 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 scroll. But I'll do it. Hold on one second. I'll plop it up here next to Omnibot. All right. This is my monitor on PAL. You're going to see it flicker the F real bad because I don't know if it's going to capture the 50 hertz. It's trying, but you're gonna, I don't see that here. You're going to see some... 50 cycles. My camera's set for 60. I can't set it for 50. This is America, where Jesus lives. Okay, we're loading Miss Pac-Man, as usual. I'm trying to play the game and record this at the same time. Oh yeah. What's with this? Pop your cherry. As you can see, it works. In PAL, but this monitor is NTSC, so it's still going to cut it off. The game's going to boot native because it is that. I'm going to try state of the art. I don't know if it's going to go. Here we go. State of the art in my hand. GoTech. Or not Go. Actual floppy drive. DF0. Spaceballs requires a real floppy drive. This is an NTSC monitor on a PAL Amiga. You're going to see the flicker because my camera can't do 50 hertz. But it's crystal clear when I'm looking at it. Cool, huh? Now you're gonna see some ghosting because my monitor refresh rate is causing ghosts, but it's playing totally fine on my end. You're just gonna see some stuff. But it works! Cool, huh? Alright. So as you can see and you watched another Amiga has been saved. We got the PAL A1200 video fixed, recapped, audio is banging on this one, loud as heck, great op amp. Crystal clear, you'll see some flicker because it's the camera, she looks great, nice crisp display and everything is cool. A little more extended recap, I showed a lot more behind the scenes of the actual cap job. Show you how I kind of use a little smaller millimeter cap and where I slide them. The little tip on the keyboard connector, fine tip solder point, will help you out on that. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.